Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are in chapter 5 and we are continuing with the same topic 5.1 selection of task matrix from yesterday and we have covered the part 1 of certain matrices as from this particular segment and we will be continuing with the part 2 considering some more matrices from the same. In continuation we have the next matrix as ratio of failures to defect. Now ratio to failures of defect in terms of like to understand how many most of defects are basically identified with help of automation. It is quite common that automated tests may fail due to a single defect. It could be from the application point of view, maybe from the task point of view or could be in terms of the environment, third party software or any kind of support which you expect from the extensions, libraries or design architecture or any such thing. Now probably uh, any test or maybe when you run different tests, it might fail or most of the tests would fail because of one common reason and that could be from anywhere. So now why do we want to measure the ratio of failures to defect is because how many tests have failed but what was the reason behind that? Now when you say a defect was identified but there were several failures and the reason was only one then automation is not efficient. Because we wasted a lot of our time and a lot of failures, but it was unable to identify different defects. Where we are basically targeting to capture as many different defects as possible when compared to same defect, several failures. And that's where the ratio of failures to defect is more important and we are keen to understand how this can be done. So, so measuring the number of automated tests that fails for a given defect can help indicate where this may be a problem. The solution lies in the design of the automated test and their selections for execution. So everything is quite clear. The next matrix is time to execute automated test. Of course the time is really important if you're taking a long duration to execute automated test and when compared to the other uh, several tests which you were doing in terms of manual then of course it would be a challenge also. So we have to keep on tracking that what is the time taken to exec because one of the easier matrix is to determine what time it takes to execute the test because in the beginning of the test it might not be important but as the number of automated test cases increases this matrix may become quite important because more number of test cases may require more time for the execution though it is automation but probably may not fulfill all the commitments in next number of automated test cases this matrix can be used to show the progression made by the test automation project but one has to take into account that just the number of automated test cases does not reveal a lot of information for example it does not indicate that the test coverage has increased so number of automated test cases doesn't really mean that if you have 100 test cases all 100 should be automated just because you have a solution for this so it's really important to document and determine what tests are you doc automating and if it is automated, what is the efficiency on that? Was that really required to be automated? So those ratios could really help you a lot. In continuation, the next uh, matrix here is number of pass and fail result. Of course, as we understand from the understanding on the manual testing as well, that the determination or measure of pass and fail results would give definitely give you what kind of effort and what kind of confidence do you have on the product so far. So uh, measuring this common matrix about pass and fail ratio, that number of tests which has passed and number of tests which has failed would tell you how you know efficient your testing has been so far and should we continue further to do the same. It is also important to determine the common reasons uh, for the failures if it is going to be the internal task settings or maybe probably the environment or SUT. So that would be more important to determine what exactly is the failures. So it will be uh, quite important to take care of pass and fail results as well. So from today, the end, end of this, uh, we will be having another uh, matrix here to understand number of false fail and false pass result. Now we understand this from the basic introduction to false positive and false negative kind of results where generally we say false fail which means that a negative test was reported, a situation was reported and it was uh, actually captured as same like it was a problem. But we might be in trouble when we actually experience false pass. False pass is a scenario where uh, SUT or the application had a failure but the automation tool marked it as pass. 
That means the tool was unable to capture this particular failure. And this could be a drastic or more dangerous for us during automation. So we actually have to consider such factors that how many of fa fail pass, sorry, the false fail and false pass results are occurring. Because if you have more false pass results, then probably you are looking for an alternate to your automation solution because whatever you have may not be quite helpful at this point of time because if you're having more uh, false pass results then that means the tool is unable to capture uh, most of the failures so there's no point relying on this tool any longer because this tool is incapable incompetent of determining the confidence and the quality of the product so when a pass fail, false pass occurs there was obviously the system issue so in this case, a potential defect may escape detection. So that could be a question on the quality and may challenge a lot of other parameters of the organization. This can occur because the verification of the outcome was not done properly. An invalid test oracle was used or test case expecting the wrong results. So that could be probably different ways. Like maybe you go wrong, maybe the automation tool was wrong. So you just have to identify that and then further separate them, classify them into different category and see that what is that necessary action you need to take thereafter. So that's the more important thing what you need to take care from here. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with another part of this particular tutorial, part three of that to cover the rest of the matrices. So till then, stay tuned with us. Should you have any queries beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address the same. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.